Hi everyone and welcome back on adobelive.com. We're still live from San Diego, California at Adobe Max the Creativity Conference. This is the final day and uh, we will end uh, the stream with actually three photographers starting with Helena Price. Helena! Hello! Yeah, we're very lucky to have you. I'm Thanks. so happy when you said yes. I said, yeah. <laughs> I'm so happy cool. to be here. This is great. Yeah, so... Thanks for putting it together. So, uh, people in the chat, maybe you can uh, tell us where you are from, so it will give us an idea of uh, who's in the chat. Hi, and, Chatter. Uh, please ask questions. We really have uh, Elena just for us for 55 minutes. Um, and uh, we will talk about her work and the creative process. I mean, anything, just ask questions. Fix your hair, Michael. Yes, I know. <laughs> but this is day three. I won't be able to fix my hair. I'm trying to fix my hair since I'm 17. It just doesn't work. <laughs> I just let it go. Okay, so they say bonjour, Helena. So Helena, uh, maybe you want to introduce yourself? Yeah, hi. What do you do? Where are you from? Yeah, my name's Helena Price. I'm a photographer based in San Francisco, California. And though I travel a lot, I'm mostly based in San Francisco. And I've been shooting since I was a little kid, but didn't make the jump to full-time photographer until maybe four years ago. Okay. And built a photo business up from there. Look at that. She's like one of the big speakers of Adobe Max. So you had your session already? Yeah. How it was, did it go? It was great. Yeah, I uh, loved it. I thought it was going to be smaller, and then I looked in my room and I saw <laughs> 600 chairs. <laughs> so I was uh -oh. like, I need to go work on my talk. So I, I made a bunch of changes that night. <laughs> I was thinking I'd do something intimate and bring note cards and do some workshopping. And I was no. like, I don't know if I can do that with Workshop that many people. Workshop with uh, 600 people? No. No, but it was great. So it we have people you see from Jamaica, from Earth. That's Hi, been Earth. Used. Hi, Earth. Hello, yeah. Earth. Good to know. Detroit. I love uh, Detroit. South Africa. Amazing. Okay. Or we already someone who's in love uh, from uh, Ushuaia. Wow! Do you know Ushuaia in Argentina? I've never been. Ushuaia is the is the point I think, which is at really the the south of uh, South America. Wow. Like the crazy. That's pretty cool. And I mean, thanks for being there with us. It's, it's very good. Switzerland, Chicago, Morocco. But yeah. So cool. There we go. Hey, thanks everybody. for joining. So you, you wanted to show your. Um, portfolio in your website, which sure. is uh, HelenaPrice.com. If you want to check, it's very easy. Yeah. I like easy domain names. I mean, yeah, I <laughs> I had someone from my hosting provider call me recently and he's like, so why did you buy your own name website? Just to protect your name? And I was like, yeah, yeah sure, <laughs> sure. That's why I bought it. <laughs> um, sure, is my website up? I can't talk. Um, yeah. No. Oh, yeah, yeah. Don't, don't worry. They, we have the best <laughs> team here. <laughs> Yeah, I can totally like, walk people through my work. So, if so you guys I can see. see it. Oh, they can. They can. So a lot of portraits. Yeah. Can tell. So my focus over you know the last few years has been a lot of portraits. I love portraits more than anything in the world. I love just taking my camera everywhere with me that I go and just shooting things that I happen to see. And then a lot of my work takes place in Silicon Valley because in my past life I worked in Silicon Valley, so I know it super well and so can you share what was your best lab or oh yeah so my past life I my last role was head of communications and partnerships so I did oh. everything from press launches to business development partnerships for IT companies for startups for startups yeah wow. cool. um, so that was my life and you know I made I learned so many amazing skills that I can use as a photographer on myself, which is so nice. Uh, yeah. You know, you learn how to build a business. How to PR yourself. Yeah, yeah. How to talk to journalists, like all these things, such valuable skills, you know, <laughs> business skills that any creative can benefit from. Uh, but I was really not happy working yeah. in that industry. You know, just, I think I was also sad that I wasn't taking pictures. So at some point I was like, I'm gonna, I'm gonna quit. And I don't even have a savings account, but I'm gonna quit and I'm gonna see if I can make it work. And it worked, which is pretty that's, cool. Uh, yeah, and that's, uh, that's an interesting story because I think we can talk about it later, but like uh, yeah. uh, being a creative today with uh, social networks, Behance, I mean, all these, uh, um, I feel that it wasn't the case 10 years ago, but like today there is no more frontier. Like you can be a very successful designer or photographer and live uh, in Cairo, in Egypt, and yeah. really extend your network thanks to, if you know how to PR yourself and uh, if you know how to build your own brands. And that's what you did. I mean, it's amazing. In four years, wow. I'm really, I, I'm amazed. <laughs> thanks, thanks. Yeah, I mean, it's, it's such a, it's a thing that 
I think most people don't learn in school, even in business school, you don't really learn how to build a business no, in yeah, real life. That's right. And so I'm so grateful for those years where, you know, one of the biggest things you learn in startups is that there's no one way to do anything. Mm. Like, there's no path. You just have to Google your way into learning stuff and you're going to be faced with all of these challenges that you've never faced and no one you've worked with has ever faced and you just, you basically teach yourself how to teach yourself. So we have some questions already by uh, Stephanie and another one by Mohamed, but it's more or less the same questions. Uh, mm -hmm. Talking about your equipment. Yeah. Uh, so um, also and, and the type of shooting. So because I see some uh, street photography maybe, uh, or so you shoot in the studio also. Mm -hmm. You do both, yeah? Yeah, so I shoot, I spent my first 15 years from six years old to 21, I shot on disposable cameras from Walmart. So I shot on film, I used flash, um, it was very easy, I didn't know what else to do, and then eventually I moved to digital. Okay. But today I shoot with a Mark III from Canon, mm -hmm. and I most of the time shoot with a 35 millimeter lens. I'm a very purist, if I can, I love that lens. 99% of my work on my website is shot with that lens, even portraits, uh, just because I really like context. And I like making, you know, as a someone who shoots for the web a lot, and for editorial too, you want to make room for text and you want to be aware of what the client might want in the future. So I just love shooting with a 35. I think it represents just the way that I see things in, in real life. And it's the closest thing yeah. I can find. And, and that's the point of the 35. Uh, yeah. like if you look at like the first uh, reporter, you know, even from the 50s so with the Leica, yeah. it was 35 millimeters. I mean, that's... Uh, yeah. And, and I think you're right, like it's the closest to real life, yeah, to what yeah, we see. Yeah. So that's a good point. And uh, the good thing with, with having a French host is that I can translate also the French questions. That's so good. So Daniel says, le top votre travail. Do you know what it means? I have no idea. Your work is dope. Thanks, bro. Yeah. <laughs> How do you say that in French? Merci, uh, mon ami. Merci, mon ami. Right. Good job. Um, and I, you know, over the years, I went from just super pure, like only 5.3 5, or Mark III, 5D Mark III, and a 35 millimeter lens. Like that is literally the only thing I brought to shoots um, for the first couple of years. And you know, I knew how to find natural light. I'm very, very picky about light, so I would just find where the light was good and shoot there. And now, you know, as my career's grown, and now I do shoots with crews and stuff like that, I work with uh, a lot of Pro Photo B1s. I'm very a fan of being nimble and I like battery powered lights and so I'll bring those and bring diffusions and umbrellas and really try to create the same light that I used to try to find naturally. So in a perfect world you can't tell which of my photos is professionally lit and which is just using the sun. Mm -hmm. Nice. Yeah. And so you said that now you work with a crew? So yeah, yeah. Can, so, so what kind of crew? For the smallest shoots it's just yeah. me and an assistant. For the longest time I didn't even know what to tell, I didn't know what an assistant would even do for me because <laughs> I was so used to doing it all myself. I didn't go through the traditional kind of ranks of assisting and that sort of thing. Um, just kind of jumped in head first and didn't know what I was doing. So now I have, you know, assistants that, you know, just help carry equipment and, and it just on the fly, if we're shooting really fast and I need someone to like bring and a light down. And the, yeah, yeah, exactly. I mean, Collector yeah, holder. You need someone. If I the agree. shot is too bright, I tell them to bring the lights down a couple of stops. Like it's just so nice to have an extra person so that you can shoot really quickly and efficiently. And then sometimes, you know, last week I did a shoot with maybe a 30 person crew. And that's everything from people setting up lights for me to makeup, to wardrobe, to talent to you know, all of these different people just making production assistance, making sure catering is there for everybody. Like, it, as the shoots grow, the team grows, and it's, it's amazing, but it's also like, wow, all of these people are here just so that I can get the shot. It's pretty high pressure. It all oh, yeah, boils down to the shot. I guess. Okay, so, so what we like to do uh, on the stream with uh, photographers is also to review some pictures, and yeah. also if you can tell the, the story of the picture. Totally. Well, I think the best of thing. Favorite one. Yeah, I think the best thing I can talk about right now is probably the thing that I talked about at Adobe Max, which is oh, yeah. the personal okay. projects that I've been working on, which is a very new thing for me. Like I've always done personal work. You can see tons of personal work in my website, you know, mixed in with commissions, and I always have my camera on me. But this year was the first year that I wanted to make a personal project, like something that had kind so of a thesis okay. or a point of view. On um, the side, with, where, yeah, with a vision, a series yeah, of, yeah, like addressing a problem or exploring a problem. I wanted to start getting into that. Okay. And I've actually wanted to do something like that for 10 years, but just really needed to slowly work my way up to it. So 
The first project that I did this year was called Techies, and okay. it's on Silicon Valley because Silicon Valley is my world, and I love it dearly. But it's had some cultural issues, you know, as everything in the world does. But there's been a lot of conversations around diversity and inclusion. There are people that believe that there are no problems. It's very, there's a lot of dialogue about it right now. And I, as a photographer, you know, I wanted to get involved, but I wanted to figure out the best way how, and that seemed to be a photo project. Like, why not explore that problem with photography? So I set out and put a call for subjects out for Silicon Valley tech workers, uh, you know, from all over. And I wanted to focus on people whose stories are usually less told and appreciated. And mm -hmm. so that could be women or people of color or people over 50 or LGBT. Diversity, yeah. yeah, just really focusing on people who have these extraordinary stories, but maybe they've never been in the press or maybe they've never even talked about it. So I put a call for subjects out, 500 people applied in two weeks. And then over three months, I did 100 long form interviews and 100 portraits in the living room of my house. And so I launched Techies in the beginning of April, and it resonated with way more people than I could have ever imagined. It ended up on ABC and CNN wow. and Fortune and Fast Company and Newsweek, and it ended up in Open Magazine, like all of these places nice. that I didn't expect it to show up in. Uh, so, you know, it really ended up speaking to a lot of people and really addressing some problems that are starting to be talked about but maybe need to be talked about more. And then I just did a political project. I'm like, I don't know if I can even show this because it's got a kind of a profane name, uh, but it's called The Pussy Project. It's a political project and it was exploring women around the election and the idea that, you know, the American election right now has really kind of provoked a lot of women to speak up about politics for the first time. Oh. And that's a really new and powerful thing. But And a lot of women are still scared to talk about it. So I wanted to do a project exploring that. And because the election's coming up, I only had two weeks to do it instead of three months. So I put a call for subjects out. I ended up finding women from all over the country. Women flew in from all over. We had one woman drive in from Utah. And I've got you know women from 24 to 72, like all kinds of races, all kinds of religious backgrounds, all kinds of political backgrounds, like the whole gamut, trans women, just a huge variety of women and their stories of what this election means to them. So I just released that three days ago. Oh, okay. And it's been, uh, it's been pretty awesome. So that's so, been my work for this year in a big way. So when you do portraits like this, uh, I guess that uh, in this kind of project, because there is also a message behind. Yeah. Um, so there is the picture and there's also what you want to say about it. So how do you present the story of these people? Like, yeah, so, so is it I'm on the website or you do an yeah. exhibition and then you print the story on the side? So I include it. Oh, okay. So when you go through. Nice, okay. Yeah, Easy. I'm a big fan of pairing stories like kind of oral histories almost with photos. Uh, nice. There's something that feels really powerful yeah, we in had, that uh, for me. We had uh, Humans of New York on stage. Right yeah, here, he was so good. Mm. He was so good. And there's something so powerful about that, right? Yeah. You've got a photo, which it can be powerful in its own right. and then But when you add additional context to it with other forms of media, maybe that's written, maybe that's spoken, then there are layers added to that that sometimes photos may just not even be able to convey. And so mm -hmm. I'm a huge fan of experimenting with combining different media and kind of even blurring the lines of, you know, am I just a photographer at this point? I don't know. CNN called me an oral historian the other day. Oh. So who knows what I am anymore? But I am such a fan of the power of photography coupled with just like normal people's stories and yeah. how relatable that can be and how much people can learn from that, you know? Oh, they say great work, Helena. Uh, someone's talking also about your color palette and editing, really soft and elegant, really awesome. Thank you so much. Uh, how do you approach that, by the way? Like, like when you have a model, like, uh, let's, let's take these uh, three ladies, for yeah. instance. Um, different color backgrounds. So do you choose, like, uh, in advance, or you wait, yeah. wait for to, to see the model, and then you'll say, okay, maybe we can use this tint? How do you I'm do that? I'm very opinionated about color, and I can't even explain <laughs> what it is that prompts it. Like for techies, for instance, I knew that I wanted to shoot that on a navy blue background. And I don't know why, but I just knew that that's what I wanted to use. And perhaps it's because 
most tech portraits that you see are shot on a white background and they're very corporate. And I wanted to do something that felt really editorial and very graceful and something that really elevated them and put them in a context that they're not normally in. And then for the Pussy Project, I wanted to do something that felt more bright and, you know, very like almost poking fun at femininity by going kind of hardcore on the pink side of the spectrum. And, you know, even in my portraits, for instance, like, I don't know if this will pull up really quickly, but, you know, I was commissioned to do a shot of uh, George Bush and Laura Bush a couple Whoa, years ago. And I just, I knew immediately, like, it, that yeah. I wanted to shoot it on this kind of pinkish beige background. And I don't know why, but for some reason that is just... Yeah, that was already your vision. I'm very decisive about that. And then a lot of color, which I think I... I'm so obsessed with light and the quality of mm. light. And I think that a lot of color actually is light, you know, because light is what creates the photo and um, what might be interpreted as a soft color palette is also soft light. So light has a lot to do with it for me. Good, so you want to review some pictures maybe? from? We can. So I can walk you through, you know, some of my portraits. It's such a combo of, like, I shot this for a magazine. Oh, okay. This is my good friend Michelle that I just happened to shoot <laughs> in really good light in uh, New Orleans the this year. This is Elona, oh, who spoke last year at Adobe project. Math. Yeah, so that was for my project in studio. Oh, yes. Uh, her talk is available on the YouTube Credit Club channel. If you check for uh, Adobe Max 2015 keynote day two, yeah, she was on stage. And, uh, yeah, that was very, amazing. Uh, yeah, very inspiring. Uh, personal commission for PR photos. The wow, nice. CEO or CPO of Airbnb, co-founder of Airbnb, oh, yeah. wow. um, for a magazine. Also, a wonderful person. Yeah. So it's wow, a combo it? of you know personal commissions as far as portraits, lots of stuff from magazines, that sort of thing. This is a tech <laughs> portrait of a friend of it's mine from who the happened to hire. Uh, no, actually, but he did design techies. I so am? yeah, oh, that's a funny, so a uh, funny there's combination. A yeah. But this was just shooting for his company. <laughs> um, yeah, so you know, it's a wow. total hodgepodge. It's studio stuff. It's personal commissions. It's PR photos. Shot this for the Great Discontent. Uh, Roman Mars oh, from yeah. Ninety Nine Percent Invisible. This was just at a friend's house. It's, so it's a total mix. It's really fun to kind of combine things, and and you just never know what was commissioned and what you just happen to make at home when the light's perfect and then oh, so they love the beige background <laughs> i guess <I'm> <laughs> or just the w bush picture also uh royal line is asking so the colors and the, the different peak backgrounds yeah uh so was it made with different light intensities or just different backgrounds these were three different backgrounds okay so so what's the name of the this is like a uh, seamless so, yeah so something that you roll or uh-huh so yeah. seamlesses are Paper Seamless backgrounds oh, okay. that you just roll down, and most of the photographs that you see shot for magazines and stuff like that with a, just a solid background, it's paper. It's very easy to carry around, very easy to take <laughs> to different studios or take even on site to someone's office if you're shooting for a magazine. But that that is it. It's paper. I bought these three colors from Savage, uh, which is a brand of Seamless. You can just Google Savage. And um, I just, I really liked these three colors, and it just felt like a good fit. For so the you project. just uh, bring uh, several uh, teams, yeah. like several and paper. they're cheap. They're like twenty-five dollars. Oh, okay. So cheap. Like, yeah, you can get a seamless really easily, and it's a huge roll. It'll last you your whole life unless you bang it up a bunch, and then you have wrinkly paper. Uh, but yeah, it's so so easy to find these colors. So, how Ahmad is asking a question about uh, how do you find inspiration, or like, or do you have like a routine, or? I find tons of inspiration from everywhere. I find photographic inspiration a lot of the times when I was first, yeah. you know, getting started as a professional, as a full-timer, I found tons of inspiration on Tumblr. There's, you know, tons of professional photographers posting amazing work on, on Tumblr. And now I've actually shifted that attention to Instagram a lot where I follow magazines that I love. I follow people who have shot for those magazines, lots of editorial photographers and portrait photographers that I just, I love their work. and. I, I know that, you know, for me, at this point now, I understand enough about light and production that I can really examine a photo and like really kind of study it almost like a book and just look at the quality of light, try to guess how they made it. And that's a really good learning process for me. But other than that, I mean, and it's the same with even looking through a magazine. I love looking through 
magazines like Vogue even and just marveling at, you know, just really trying to look at how they retouched it, how it was lit. Um, a lot of it's a guessing game, but it, it really starts to inform my preferences around how I like to light stuff. And then other than that, I find inspiration from a lot of other fields. Like design inspires me a lot. A ton of writers inspire me, just really good storytellers that make good content. Uh, it could be, you know, it's a lot of different disciplines, I feel like, inform the work that I do, especially as I get more into these personal projects uh, where I'm taking photography and applying it to a totally different industry. Mm -hmm. So, yeah, it, it's all kinds of stuff. But I'm a big fan of really versing yourself in other disciplines because those will totally set you apart as a photographer or a designer. Like, only looking, if you're a photographer, only looking at photography, it might limit you a little bit in terms of your ideas and the kinds of things that you want to say. And same with a designer, if you're only following designers, then you might get really technically good at design, but when it comes to really figuring out how to be you and mm -hmm. really how to say what you want to say, a lot of that inspiration comes from outside the field. And um, so, JR Ingram. Maybe not the artist. You know JR, the artist, the French yeah. artist? I don't <laughs> that'd think be that, nice. I don't, that'd be nice. I don't think You're that, fine too, other yeah. JR. So, <laughs> what's the best way to market uh, oneself? Oh, okay. Yeah. Uh, and this is a field that you know because you, yeah. you were I mean, saying that you work in, in communication, partnerships. Totally. Ladies and gentlemen, lunch ah. will be closing in 10 minutes. Okay, we will get stuck. Lunch will be closing in 10 oh, minutes, lunch. everyone. Oh, okay. <laughs> um, marketing, yeah, I mean, the good news is that you don't need a marketing degree to learn how to market yourself. I think a huge part of marketing is actually just building relationships uh, in the field that you want to be involved in. So, you know, for instance, if you're a photographer that really wants to be successful in the food industry, go spend all of your time in the food industry. Like, really immerse yourself in it. Go and make friends with everyone that you can. Go be a regular at restaurants that you want to shoot at and really get to know the bartenders and the chefs. Like, just get to know everyone in that industry. Hmm. And you're going to build rapport. And, you know, it takes a really long time. It's a, it's a total long game. It's not going to happen overnight, but eventually you're going to be the go-to person in that community that you really want to excel in. And so for me, for instance, I found so much success early on in Silicon Valley, way quicker than I could have imagined, hmm. because I'd actually spent years yeah. in Silicon Valley making friends with everyone that I could, doing favors without expecting anything in return, just being really kind and caring about people and really building a reputation for myself as a person that you want to spend time with. And so that paid off so much when I became a photographer and suddenly I was the photographer that everyone knew in Silicon Valley, very fast. And that, I, I could have never expected that to happen, but in retrospect, all of those pieces fit together really correctly. So for me now, for instance, you know, I'm starting to move into bigger commercial stuff, bigger editorial stuff, I have an agent now. So for me, that next step is figuring out, okay, like where do I need to spend my time hmm. to go and build more relationships where I want to go and that means right now it means me doing a lot of meetings yep. it's total long game you go and meet people and after five minutes they're like okay nice to meet you and then you go on your way but you just cross your fingers mm -hmm. that you run into them more and more maybe at industry events maybe you know wherever people happen to spend their time and over time they're gonna remember your name and they're gonna hire you so very long game but really that is like that is the way to do it and then of course always working on making your work better Mm -hmm. and sharing it and not being afraid to share it even in your earlier years like I look back on techies for instance and yeah. I look at the photos and I, that was only when was it 10 months ago oh, that okay. I shot so these photos recent, yeah. but I look at them and most people wouldn't notice but I'm like ah oh, the lights inconsistent or the colors are inconsistent and oh this is so I wish I could have done better at this but <laughs> you just have to publish it you know yeah. and then you learn from that and you learn how to make photos that are totally consistent hmm. and so my next project was a hundred times better and again most people don't even notice but I notice and it's just because you you make work you share it hmm. it's tough to make yourself vulnerable and expose yourself in that way when you know it could be better but you know you're gonna get better so I think those are the, the things that you got to do so we had some questions about your uh, should day workflow and routine yeah. You know, when you know that you will go like uh, shoot something, what, what is the process? And also someone was asking about your uh, use the software to edit the picture, how you do that? Yeah, so 
for me, okay, my routine is wake up earlier than I like to and be sad <laughs> about that for a minute. Um, and then for, you know, it depends on the shoot day. So mm -hmm. for a smaller shoot day, my assistant comes and picks me up because I don't have a car. We load all my gear into the car and then we go drive to the shoot. And maybe that's a few hours of taking executive portraits, like super chill day, really fun. You get to meet some people. And then I go home and I am the like anti-procrastinator. I, oh, okay. if I don't do it immediately, I might forget to do it. So I like, okay. I turn stuff around faster than most people on the planet, I think. So I immediately, you know, I shoot tethered. So all of my photos go straight, you know, oh, into the computer. the computer. So they're already on my computer and I immediately make proofs of everything and send them to the client, like as soon wow. as I get home. And I'm like, here you go. And when do you use to? Uh, so for, I, I apologize to Adobe. I use Capture One for tethering and bringing stuff in. Um, Leave. <laughs> <laughs> are you kicking me out now? Shoot. <laughs> I mean, I love Lightroom also, but I use Capture One <laughs> because it's really, really fast for tethering. And maybe Lightroom will be faster and that will be amazing. Maybe. And I'll use Lightroom. Yeah. No, it's a good feedback. Yeah, speed up that tethering, Lightroom. Yeah, um, but the I, Lightroom team? <laughs> yeah. And then I use Photoshop for editing. So okay. for Capture One, so I Capture use that One to bring it like onto to the computer. Select the picture and uh, delete yeah. the one you don't want. So you make a first selection, you exactly. send it to the customer. Exactly, and I used Bridge for years for sorting. Now yeah. I just use Capture One for bringing it in. I use it for exporting the proofs. And then when I edit, I edit in Photoshop. Actually, we have a Lightroom expert here. Oh. Hi. Terry, <laughs> you need to tell the team that we need the, the tethering to be faster. <laughs> when <do> we... <laughs> I was going to okay. say, you probably know. <laughs> I know you're doing your best. Thank you. Um, so then I do my, my editing in Photoshop. Yeah, in Photoshop. OK, cool. Yeah. And yeah, so I send the proofs. The client will get back to me on what their favorite photos are. And we've already agreed on the kind of final number of whatever they want. And so they'll send me the file names. And then I'll edit. And, and I'll probably edit them all immediately, because I am not a procrastinator at all. And then they have their photos. So it's usually cool. like wham, bam. The shoot is done. And um, someone was saying, I think, Alexandre, he's working black and white. Uh, so does it happen sometimes for you or you just uh, shoot? Or, I do not shoot black and white. Yeah. I don't know why. I think maybe just because I... I'm, and you love colors. I love color. Yeah. I see in color. I would really... I'm trying to push myself to try something black and white this year mm -hmm. because I'm trying to get myself out of my comfort zone and just see what would happen. I'm also sh shooting on little disposable cameras again just to kind of push myself and you know, play with my aesthetic and just see what happens. Um, but I, it's, I have no experience in black and white. Okay. Though I think they're beautiful photos and I prefer photos of myself in black and white, like all of us do. Uh, so do you create action, so maybe in Photoshop to make edits quicker? Or yeah, do you have a file that you can show them? Yeah, I have, um, well, let's see. Let's see, all right. So people here's in the chat are they, very nice with me because they are very concerned that I didn't have food. Oh. I, I will be okay. I will be okay. I'm so sorry. yeah, I have three actions that I use. Oh, okay. um, I'm like, can I just it's pretend sharing. to pull in a photo here? Yeah. I'll just click this and then I'll open this image in the tab and then I'll save this image. You can drag and drop too. Can I drag and drop? Yeah. There we go. Okay, so here's my pretend image that I'm editing of Elle. Shout out to Elle for being so beautiful. Um, so when I'm, most of my colors I keep pretty much the way they are, but for this, for these in particular, I wanted to make them a little different. So I don't know if you guys have heard of Cole Rise. I bet a lot of you have. He made the Lightly filters a really long time ago. And so I've got my two favorites here, Linen and Argyle. And so if I want to tweak the colors a little bit for, for the Pussy Project, for instance, I used Argyle and pretend I haven't already used Argyle on here. And then I bring the opacity down quite a bit because I just want like the tiniest, the tiniest little color change. Okay. And then I'll merge it so and then. Can you explain again where, where, you, where you, you got the um, Yeah, so settings? if you Google Lightly, L-I-T-E-L-Y, uh, those are some Photoshop filters that Cole Rise made a couple of years ago. Okay. And they're great. They, they plug right into Photoshop, and he's made tons of them. I only like one or two um, for my purposes, because I like to keep my colors the same, and I don't want to switch it up too much. Uh, but they're great. 
Yeah. They're great. So if I, if I want to tweak my colors, I usually use the Argyle. And I'll bring the opacity down a lot because I, I don't want it to change the, the real feel of the photograph. Like I'm not a huge fan of making my colors that crazy, but sometimes it's nice just to have a little something different about it. And then my other action is resizing because I hate oh. resizing photos. And normally I just end up resizing them to 2,000 pixels wide. And so I have more room when I need to, you know, have my Dropbox full of photos that I'd post on the web. Oh yeah. So those are my two actions. And Scott is asking, do you shoot RAW or JPEG or both? Oh, RAW. 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 Only RAW, yeah. Yeah. Nice. OK, and then you use Camera Raw, I guess, when you import, or? Um, so again, <laughs> oh, so again so you use Capture the One takes in the RAW files, and then, and then I export them as TIFFs. And then I'll edit oh, okay. TIFFs in Photoshop. And so I have something print res. If, I, if like a magazine wants to print it or yes. something like that, or That's I want to print it, and then I'll resave it as a JPEG usually at 2,000 pixels wide for the web. For the web? Yep. OK, cool. Uh, do you use a MacBook Pro on iMac? Oh, I it's use, more about your computer. I use this. Just this. Um, for the first couple of years, I used an 11-inch MacBook Air to do all of my editing with no <laughs> monitor, which people Very thought I brave. was insane for. And I also agree that that was kind of insane. <laughs> uh, I've upgraded since I finally started earning money as a photographer. Uh, so I got, you know, a better MacBook Pro, and I actually, I use, I'm a big fan of the wire cutter. They give these really amazing electronics recommendations for monitors and stuff like that. And so I just went with the Dell monitor that they recommended, which has kind of gotten the job done, but it's really time for me to upgrade that too, because I don't trust it to <laughs> calibrate colors properly. Um, I had my first scare actually when I oh. was about to launch this project. Uh, and I recalibrated my monitor after I'd edited all of the photos, and it, they were different than when I was editing them. But I still like them, but I just, they're actually a different color than I thought they were gonna be. But I'm not mad about it. It and looks kind of good. Anna is asking, do you color proof your monitors? Nope. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so that's kind of the last Trust thing the that I need to that's the start next doing. Yeah, it's basic, because I'm so DIY and I like, you know, <laughs> haven't really been taught any of this stuff and I've just googled my way into learning everything uh, there's every year has a new kind of standard for me of quality and so I think yeah. this next year step might be the color calibration year it usually takes me like making a huge mistake by not oh, doing a yeah. thing to be and like oh maybe I should do this should I should do that time. thing yeah. I should do that thing so now that I've had my first color calibration scare I think it's time okay. learn through error I want you to spell the action again okay we do it in the chat so is it lightly L I T E dot L Y. I believe that's the URL. And if you Google Cole Rise, yeah. C O L E R I S E, he's a really great developer slash photographer. You'll find it. Cool. Uh, Sparsh is asking, did you uh, did she attend art school? Oh. No, I, I went know. to school for PR. Yeah, different background. Yeah, yeah. Um, I think that art school is amazing i i kind of think of i mean i hated all school so <laughs> for me i'm just such a fan of the the self-learning and even if you did go and get a, a traditional education once you come out i'm sure all of you have had this moment where you're like i don't know anything about the real world oh my god what do i do and so just that spirit of always continuing to teach yourself like i am an expert in certain things now based on experience but you know, there's still just an infinite amount of things to learn, and I spend a lot of time on the internet just continually teaching myself stuff to get better. So we have uh, Royline who would like to know if you follow photographers. Or... Oh yeah, I follow tons of photographers. You can go to my, my Instagram is Helena Dagmar, H-E-L-E-N-A-D-A-G-M-A-R, and you can go to who I follow. It's this amazing list of, you know, magazines, editorial photographers. Can you show maybe oh, in the yeah. browser? Because they, I, I know they will ask again. <laughs> yeah. I prefer to use this space. Yeah, so this is me. And yeah, I, I wonder if I can, no, I can't click on that. So yeah, if you go to who I'm following, it's this, I mean, it's some of my friends too, who aren't photographers, but for the most part, it's tons of magazines and editorial photographers and commercial photographers who I love, like the best way to look at who inspires me is going into who I'm following on Instagram. Good. Uh, 
how you use that skin? Do you print your pictures uh, or is it just for screen and digital? So in, wi in which case do you, do you print? I haven't printed photos in years until I did Techies and I did a show. And so... So you had an exhibition? Yeah, yeah. In San um, Francisco? Mm-hmm. Oh, nice. Yeah, and so I needed to print. And that's always a scary moment because you are like, are these going to look good printed? They look good on the screen, but I don't know for sure. Uh, luckily, they looked really awesome. It was really, really cool to see my photos, just like gigantic, you know? Yeah. Um, and always nice to be like, yes, they're actually technically sound. Um, so I would actually, I mean, it, wherever you are, these guys delivered it to anywhere. I went with Bay Photo. They're based in uh, Santa Cruz, but they are really good and they're pretty darn cheap and they deliver and you get 25% off your first order and my first order was like a couple of thousand dollars so that's always really nice um, but they were great to print with I would totally recommend them okay uh, yes oh yeah a good question by uh, Matt Mitchell uh, who's asking do you plan to um, make movies you know, because we mm. see a lot of photographers also transitioning to uh, to video because now it's, it's yeah. quite easy with uh, especially with the Canon 5D Mark III. I mean, yeah, yeah. Um, I love video a lot, and I love cinematography. I get so much of my lighting inspiration from cinematography. Oh. Like it's just it's so. I mean, even just watching House of Cards when people were just like freaking out over the plot, I'm freaking out over how well lit House of Cards is. It's, a, it's so beautiful. So I just love immersing myself in the visual aspects of video. Um, so I'm totally not opposed to it. I think as I continue to do these personal projects and slowly, you know, I think the Pussy Project and Teggy's Project I did by myself and I'm starting to realize that, you know, it might be good to actually build up a team and like start treating these as I would treat my commission work. And with that, you know, you can have audio people helping record the interviews. You could have video people that are starting to make video elements of my work. Um, and so I know a lot of photographers that have transitioned into video as a director uh, versus a DP, and that's probably what I would end up doing. So, oh yeah, so it's time for a giveaway. So usually we do some giveaways. Cool. So we'll give away a one year credit card subscription to someone in the chat. Cool. But they have to type the secret keyword. And the secret keyword today is in which city does she live? Where do I live, y'all? Yeah. Which city? Not the country, the city. Okay, so type the name of the city in the chat and then I will ask my robot, Nightbot, it's my small robot. <laughs> I raised robot. him for years. Yeah. And uh, <laughs> he will pick someone in the chat. Make sure to be a to subscribe to the Credit Card YouTube channel, it gives you more chances. Actually, five times more chances to win. Okay, and you will start seeing the. the I mean, we'll see. I mean, Who knows? If they have been. It's not hard focused, to find. No, it's, it's not, not hard, hard to find. Oh, here we go. This is coming. Yeah. San Diego. Ah oh, no. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> you guys are so correct. Unbelievably correct. <laughs> oh my gosh. So really, it's the question of, do you say SF or San Fran? Am I totally spoiling it now? Uh, it's or, San Francisco, uh, full name. Or um, what is that? Frisco? SFO. Frisco? SFO. There's that. So many options. <laughs> <laughs> that is crazy. Yeah, you guys did good. Very impressed. <laughs> I'm not from Poland, but I used to live in Greenpoint, Brooklyn. And all of the old Polish ladies oh, thought yeah. I was Polish, so... Oh, yeah? Yeah. I'm half Norwegian, not Polish. Ah. Uh, <laughs> no way. Oh, my God. Someone said Brazil. You're funny. I know why you did that. <laughs> okay, I think we have a <laughs> entries. good. So, Nightbot, please, give me a... Someone... Oh! And someone who has been very active, actually, he was asking you questions. Cool. Alexandre. Alexandre Becke, congratulations. Congrats, Alexandre. Yeah. Reach me on Twitter. Ah, you see, guys, it pays to, to be with us for three days because Alexandre has been with us for three days. That's really awesome. He has been very active on the adobelive.com uh, chat. So that, that's cool. Boom, congratulations. Awesome. 
So is there another series or maybe uh, or something from your talk? I mean, Yeah, I can show you commissions. So that's kind of the other oh, yeah. side of my life uh, where these so, are shoots that I get paid to do. And so okay. this could be anything from Fitbit, which, you know, I shot this using... So Fitbit, where is it? Fitbit, it's a company uh, uh, with the... Fitness bands. Okay. And so I've, I've shot a couple oh. of uh, celebrity athletes for them. So, you know, this shoot, for instance, there's a lot of luck in these oh, because, yeah. My God, the light you know, is just... we went in the morning at sunrise <laughs> and we had all natural light to work with, which, you know, I know how to go luck, find it. You know, like you have to wake up early. It's not <laughs> just true. luck. Yeah? You woke up really early. We went, you know, we went at sunrise or before sunrise to make sure that we could find the spot. And, you know, you just cross your fingers that it's a little bit foggy and you've got this beautiful diffusion from the light. And then we just ran around until we found the spot. And this was the spot. It was so beautiful. And I could shoot this with completely natural light and we made it work. Wow. So I guess they were amazed no? when they saw that picture. Yeah, so I mean, uh, it worked out great. Yeah. So, and you know, then I do things like okay, this, people lifestyle. holding iPhones, mm -hmm. you know, there's a lot of companies that need oh, that. Oh yeah, like for apps? Yeah, totally. And then Which, you place the app and... Yeah. Exactly, yeah. So you Photoshop the app in after the fact and, and you, there's a lot of iPhone holding photos okay. in Silicon Valley. <laughs> Um, let's see, yeah, here's another one for Fitbit. You might know Harrison Barnes. He's the nicest basketball player. He's yeah. the only basketball player I've ever shot, but he's the nicest basketball player also. It was really nice working with him. And these shoots are really fast. Like, I have to come in, they're celebrities, so like their time is so oh, yeah. limited, you know? So I have maybe half an hour to get like 10 different shots of this person. And you are just going, I've got one assistant holding one light, one assistant holding another light, <laughs> and I'm yeah, like, you me. go there, you yeah. go there, you go there, you go there. And just like, you just have to yeah. run around wow. and just hope that you get the shot. So, you know, with this one, I was like, you go there, you go there right now, put your lights right here. And then we got the shot, you know, but it, these can be really intense, really fast paced. So um, do you have one more, uh, Alexon is asking, do you have more than one camera in this case? Or just I one? have like 10. 10 cameras. But I only use one. Yeah. <laughs> you know, you I've go, got like, like I'm shooting like this, you just. Yeah, I'm very, you know, for me, it's like I'm getting paid to do this and I have to guarantee that I do a good job. So the Mark III is the right camera for me. Like I know it inside and out. I know how every single manual control, like I, I just know everything that could go wrong with it and how to fix it. And then I've got, you know, all kinds of film cameras from my little disposable, like I've got a disposable camera from Walmart in my uh, in my bag right now, which I feel like I should take the last shot of this. Yeah, that's it. Um, and the, you know, I've got that ev from like a tiny little camera like that to like a twin lens TLR that I used to play around with to a Mamiya 7.2, which is just like a big box of a beautiful medium format film camera. So I've got all these different ones, but for those, that's more kind of about play and getting back to my, you know, film roots mm. and, uh, but for now, you know, really 99.9% .9 of my photos are on a Mark III. Just, I'm a big fan of picking the camera that you feel the most generat generative on. Like if you, for, for instance, like me, even holding this beautiful Mamiya film camera, I overthink everything because yeah. there are 10 shots on this roll of yeah. film. And then I'm like, oh my God, like what? am I gonna shoot? What 10 shots am I gonna get today? And then I see a moment and I'm like, uh, should I shoot that? Because should then I, I only have nine more. How am I gonna use this photo? How is it gonna live with me in my yeah. life? I overthink everything and that then I was the life of photographers 20 years ago. I you know? know. So, and then I don't shoot anything because I overthink it. And then I shoot something stupid because I have nine photos left, you know? So that process right now for me doesn't feel generative mm -hmm. and shooting digital does. So I've just gotta go with what makes me make work. Uh, so Roland is asking, what is your favorite type of commission work? Portraits. Portraits, yeah. Well, that and, you know, I love this combo of photography and storytelling to solve problems. Mm. And I've had a couple of commissions in my life where people really want to do that. Um, like a couple of years ago, I did this really big project in Miami for Uber because they were illegal in Miami and they wanted to become legal and in my opinion the best way the best people to tell that story are the people of Miami not Uber mm. and so you go and you find people who they just want transportation options you know it's not it's not people being like 
Uber. It's people just being like, we need something. You know, it's a drunk driving town. It's not safe for women. Like all of these reasons, and just going and kind of digging through that and talking to people and getting these really compelling stories from normal people um, that really tells the story that can solve problems. So those kind of commissions to me are like the most fulfilling, hands down. And because of my personal projects and doing things like Techies and the Pussy Project, I'm actually starting to get more commissions like that, which is exciting, which is totally a rule to live by. Like, go make the work you want to be hired for. Like, you might have to lose a bit of time and money making personal work for a while, but if you make the work you want to be hired for, eventually people are going to want to hire you for that kind of thing, which is really exciting. So Stephanie would like to know what is your favorite photograph? Oh. Or maybe your top three, or I don't know. Oh so if you have God. to shoot some names. Oh, favorite photographer? Yeah, oh, sorry, yes. Oh yeah, I was like, I don't know if I have a oh, favorite yeah, no, photograph. I love Annie Leibovitz. I, you know, oh, yeah. she was one of the first people I discovered. I think she is the most badass woman photographer hmm. on the planet. I really appreciate her use of lighting. I, I just think, I think she's badass. I think she's amazing. I love that so much of her work right now is focused on women again. Mm. Her portraits are so beautiful. I just love her. I think she's amazing. Um, I really love Dan Winters also. He's kind of another classic, like his lighting is so beautiful. And you know, he shoots film most of the time, but also shoots digital. Like he, his celebrity portraits are gorgeous. I'm a huge fan of photographers who really, really like use light in this very painterly, gorgeous way. And my work isn't necessarily similar to theirs, but they really helped guide me towards prioritizing light in my photography. So those are like hands down my two faves. Mm -hmm. Oh yeah, someone is mentioning also the photographer we had on stage yesterday, the yeah. warp photographer lady. Oh my goodness. What an incredible, oh I mean... Oh my god. I will invite you to write your replay of... Uh, so it's the keynote on day two. Uh, she, yeah, she's amazing. Oh my god. It was a great speech. What also. a story. Oh my god. I know, it makes me feel like my life is really boring and safe. Yeah, all, yeah. <laughs> all of us, we were like... Oh. We haven't done anything. Oh my god. And uh, Mav Mitchell is asking, do you want to get featured in Visa Pol Image? Uh, which is a, I have it's, no it's idea. Like, it's the biggest... Um, uh, photography show, I would say, in, uh, in France, actually. But, uh, yeah. I would say that of sounds course. great. Yeah. I would say that sounds really just good. Just say yes. <laughs> yeah. Oh, Mav Mitchell, if you can make it happen, yeah, just do it. Just make it happen, okay? Yeah, hey, mommy, dude. Do you know Vincent Vincent Ligné? Maybe. Uh, maybe. You know, sometimes you just need to check the work. I know. Then sometimes I know photographs and don't have a name attached to it. Why don't we look? Uh, let me check. And we won't share my screen because don't, we don't really have the screen. Oh, oh okay. his work is Portrait. gorgeous. Yeah. yeah, I've totally seen these before. So beautiful. <laughs> Aww. <Indie pop>, <laughs> so good. The best model. <laughs> so good. Yeah, I mean, I love, a, I love a good portrait. That is for sure. And uh, so maybe Stephanie was asking uh, about your favorite picture. Do you have one? Of my own or of someone else? Yeah. No, your own. Of my own? Oh. Our story. Uh, okay, you really it would like probably be in something. portraits or overview. Okay. I mean, these, a lot of these are my favorites. Yeah. I Certain guess. things make me feel really good. Like, I don't know why. I think this is my favorite tech photo hmm. I've ever taken, and I don't know why. And as far as just like commissions of a tech office, it's Twitter's office. Maybe I mean, it's just because their office is so pretty. Yeah. And, you are light addict and there is something And the light, light feels, here. yeah, the light feels There's good. Really I just, I love when I can take an office photo that feels as well lit as I would want it to be as a personal photo, maybe. Um, I'm obsessed with this photo of Nancy Duyan, who also spoke at Max, actually. She's in the Techies Project. Um, just such an amazing woman, and I love how the light falls on her, and uh, I don't know. There are just certain photos that get excite me, and I forget that I even shot them, but I just yeah. get really excited about it. Um, and like, even this. This was yeah. just a moment that I stumbled wow. upon this guy is so in Hawaii. Uh, yeah, there was just wow. so many. For me, it's like not even about the photo, like me being like, that's a good photo, Helena. It's like, I'm so excited I got this moment. Yeah. Like, that's what awesome. a cool house and what a cool car. And the sky is really pretty, and the car matches the flowers, which matches yeah. the paint on the road. And like all and these the just the magical the little house. things came together. Like this had to exist oh. for me to shoot it. And what a thrilling thing 
to find it. It's almost like treasure hunting for me. Uh -huh. So, yeah, so and it, I mean, fun. even with portraits, yeah. like capturing, it's like not even about me being like, ah, oh, what a technically sound portrait. It's like the fact that I, I know Elle really well and this photo captures mm -hmm. who she is so well and I'm so excited that we got that our time together we could get that out of each other mm -hmm. and that I could get her to you know feel comfortable enough to just really show sh who she is and it's such a tiny little nuanced thing so it's it's like less about me being pumped about me making the photo push notifications <laughs> um, and more about like wow I'm so happy that moment happened and I got to shoot it and like, yay for having it all be technically set up to yeah. look good too. <laughs> uh, Andre, Andre, Andre is very scared. What scares you about the future of photography? Why, oh. why, would, why would you be scared? I mean, I don't know. I mean, I get scared a lot in terms of, in or general? like, I kind of, I am in my head a lot and I overthink things. So, yeah. but kind of more from a like, solve the problems and anticipate the problems before they happen. So I get scared about peaking all the time. Like that's a scary thing to be like, wow, oh, you know, yeah. things are going really good. Like how do I not get lazy or how do I not get complacent with where I am? Or how do I continue to remember to hustle just as hard as I hustled when I was 22 to make sure that people don't forget about me? You know, there's like all of those kind of notions. And I, I feel like there's unproductive fear and there's productive fear. And if you, I think the productive fear is just remembering never to get comfortable and never to get lazy and always continue thinking like you did when you were like the youngest hustler that you've ever been and continue to have that energy and continue to remember that this isn't permanent. Like just because you're successful for one project, people will forget who you are in a month. So you always have to continue working for people to remember you and appreciate you. And I think that kind of worry or that kind of fear is what, uh, I don't know. I think that keeps me inspired, honestly. Uh, so it's me, Alex. So this is not me, that's the uh, evening. <laughs> uh, what do you like more, stage photography or spontaneous uh, photography? Spontaneous is impossible to pronounce for me, by the way. <laughs> Thank you, Alex. Um, staged, yeah. for me, personally, yeah, yeah. and for the photographs that I like. You know, I, I also really appreciate like the Magnum photographers and photojournalists who just make the most beautiful spontaneous photos like that tell such amazing stories like what an incredible talent for me uh, and that was kind of how I shot when I was younger you know uh, because that's what I thought taking photos was just shooting whatever happened to be in front of me but then once I discovered what staging was for me and that you can actually put a lot of work into a photo that feels spontaneous like you'd be amazed at how many people in Silicon Valley think that I make my photos by just coming into offices and running around with a camera. But it's like, no, like all of these moments I stage, but I stage them and I give it time to become something that feels really real. And so there's something about that process that I find really fulfilling. So staging is nice. It's all about setting it up and then waiting for a moment that feels real to come through, whether that's portraiture, whether that's office photography, like I really enjoy that process of setting the stage and then letting the moment happen, you know? Uh, so Pavel is asking you, do you apply the rules of thirds, golden ratio in your shooting or are you just... I don't know. <laughs> Maybe. Yeah. I mean, Maybe. But, but it's not like you don't go like, a, you don't look at the frame and... <laughs> yeah, I, say, I mean, okay, maybe I you if, just, I, if I need to crop something, you know, if I need to crop, yeah. change my crop from like, you know, two by three to one by one, yeah, then, then I'll maybe. think really yeah. hard about like the way that I would like, you know, it to be composed and that sort of thing. But most of my stuff, you know, I, when I started shooting on disposable cameras, like you can't crop. So mm. I learned how to, you know, get the crop that I wanted on the camera. And so I just, I just try to get the composition the way that I want. And composition is definitely so important to me, but I think maybe I just learned those rules such a long time ago that they're just kind of deeply ingrained in me at this point and I don't think about them. Okay. But they're important rules. Well, Helena, time, time flies with you. Yeah. Because uh, it's time to say goodbye to our friends. And uh, Bye guys. It's been a pleasure. Thanks for sharing, you know, about yeah. uh, your life, your process and uh, also your vision of uh, photography. Yeah, thank you everybody great. for yeah. being Make sure a part. to follow her on Instagram. 
Okay, maybe you can yeah. show the. So here I am on Instagram. Yeah. Feel Helena free to Dagmar. connect with uh, Helena Dagmar on Instagram, and yep. um, and we will be back in uh, five minutes with uh, another photographer, um, Laura Laura Zalenga, and uh, she's uh, she lives in uh, Munich. She's from Germany. Very cool. Yeah, but she does a lot of uh, Photoshop. So, awesome. Yeah, a lot of uh, I Photoshop it. and posting. So. Very cool. This will be interesting. We, we will have uh, also after Victoria Seymour, who is another uh, photographer. Yeah, and yeah. She, she did this. So cool. She's the one who did the Max logo. It looks so good. Yeah, it's cool. Huh? I love it. Thank you, Elena. And uh, yeah, stay with us, people, in the chat. We will be back in five minutes. Thanks, guys. Bye. <laughs>